Well, we are continuing to follow that breaking news out of Russia, where it has just been released. Russian activist and Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny has died. We'd like to welcome now Director of Communications for the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, Andriy Dobriansky. Andriy, it's always great to see you. Thank you so much for hopping on the call for this breaking news. Always great to see you, and you have quite the breaking news this morning. We certainly do. So much to follow. Now, I know you don't like to mince words, and we like that here on News Nation Live. Uh, the federal, let's start here with the statement from the Federal Prison Service. Um, it said Navalny felt unwell after a walk and lost consciousness. An ambulance arrived, tried to rehabilitate him but then he died. Uh, we know there have been many people outspoken saying this is at the hand of Putin, no doubt. Uh, what do you make of this statement, uh, uh, Andre? And what do you believe happened here? Uh, it's the very first part of what you read, a statement from the federal prison service that's the most important. Uh, what happens in Russian prisons is horrible. Uh, this is a penal colony. This is a gulag uh, north of the Arctic Circle. Why this first part of your statement is most important, because uh, what we found out is directly from the Russian government. The family themselves had no idea and could not announce it to the world. This is not something that the family was broadcasting. This is something that the Russian government was broadcasting. Now, why is that important? For two reasons. Today is the first day of the Munich Security Conference. You aired a little bit of Vice President Harris speaking there. This is a signal to all those people. This is a signal to the people who weren't there, like uh, Lindsay, Senator Lindsey Graham, who ran away from the traveling there, scared of the Russian government. Uh, so that's a signal to all those people, like Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who had a press conference with President Zelensky today. The second uh, reason, uh, that this is an important statement from the Russian government is that in 2021, President Biden announced, uh, he was asked a question, what would happen if Navalny was killed while he was in prison? And he said that the effects on Russia would be devastating. So this is, again, calling America's bluff by the Russian government. They want to they want to push America when it seems America is frozen with this uh, 90 billion plus package not being brought up a vote for vote by Speaker Johnson. Well, that was exactly my next question to you, Andre. Uh, what does this say about how Putin views the strength of the U.S. at this hour? Well, Putin is always going to raise the stakes. He's always going to call bluffs. And that's why it's very important to uh, counter him as soon as possible whenever he does anything. Unfortunately, the West has not learned this lesson. We haven't learned the lesson from uh, the 1930s or from World War I or any other dictatorial regime that we need to counter aggression almost immediately when it happens, a quick and early response. We are finally getting ourselves up to speed in Europe in terms of the amount of deployment of NATO forces. But what hasn't come up to speed is the American manufacturing for weapons that we know are just not being produced at a quick enough pace for this war in Ukraine. This is why passing this bill is very important. This is why more than 300 congressmen are ready to vote for this bill to pass it ASAP if only Speaker Johnson would let it pass. What do you believe, what was your interpretation of the VP's comments earlier today, and what response verbally are you expecting from President Biden? Um, how strong a response does this need to be? Oh, uh, much stronger than what we heard from uh, Vice President Harris. I'm sure that the timing, they knew when uh, Vice President Pear Harris was speaking, and I'm sure there was a group call uh, being set up in Munich for the Vice President to loop in with all the uh, security staff at the White House early this morning trying to figure out what happened. And don't uh, don't underplay what else was happening in the world. Ukraine was under two active air raid alerts all morning. At 8 a.m., all of Ukraine was lit up. Kherson was bombed today. Uh, there are numerous things that Russia is doing currently in the Middle East, specifically antagonizing uh, yeah, American forces. So what the United States has to do, as I mentioned earlier, is figure out a, a very strong response. This could this could you know uh, lead into the discussions right now that are happening in Munich about whether at the NATO conference Ukraine is going to get some kind of concrete security guarantee. That is something that Chancellor Schultz from Germany was ready to offer this morning with President Zelensky. But I think uh, I think the United States should call Russia's bluff about blocking Ukraine ever becoming a member of NATO and announce that it would be hap happening this year, which would be counter to everything that the White House has said up until this point.
You know, he was, Alexei Navalny, one of the most outspoken critics of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Where does the opposition movement now go? Uh, do you see a leader emerging out of all of this? Uh, has it devastated that movement? The movement is uh, effectively non-existent. Um, so uh, what Alexei Navalny represented was the movement that dates back to 2012 when we had the giant uh, protests in Bolotnaya Square in Moscow and St. Petersburg, all over Russia. That was at most 100,000 people ever since 2012. And again, this is prior to the invasion of Ukraine in 2014. Ever since 2012, those protests were uh, systematically shrunken by all these uh, leaders on the local level being arrested one by one. And so this uh, organic movement across Russia has effectively been quashed. We don't have any uh, leaders. Uh, Navalny was a, 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 a opposition leader by default. We had Boris Nemtsov shot down right in front of the uh, Kremlin in in you know uh, in cold blood. Uh, that was an opposition leader. That was somebody who had worked with other world leaders. Alexei Navalny was basically whoever was left because everybody else was either shot, imprisoned, or ran away from Russia, like uh, Gary Kasparov. So. Uh, we are at a place in Russia where there's really nothing uh, from that earlier movement. And at this point, it is the mothers of uh, uh, soldiers who have died in Ukraine that are the only hope for Russia to really rise up against this dictatorship. Wow. All right. Andre, always great to have you. Thank you so much for your insight this morning. We are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.